Researchers here in Singapore are working to develop a sensor that could help in the battle against COVID-19. The project could allow detection of clinical deterioration in patients who were suffering from acute respiratory diseases. Now, that would allow healthcare workers to monitor patients' vital parameters in real time from outside isolation rooms. For a closer look, we're joined by Associate Professor Li Ping. She's Senior Consultant at the NUH Division of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine. Professor, a very interesting development here with these sensors. What prompted you and your team to study the use of, of this non-invasive cardiorespiratory sensor? I mean, have such sensors been used in other types of illnesses before? Well, um, good evening to everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here. The cardiorespiratory sensor has been used uh, in patients uh, who suffer from diseases involving the respiratory system, such as patients with bacterial pneumonia, as well as patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease due to smoking. We view this as a unique opportunity because the coronavirus uh, uh, central to the pandemic uh, COVID-19 also affects the respiratory tract, causing pneumonia, pneumonitis, and in severe cases, acute respiratory failure. So the aim of our study is really to determine if these cardiorespiratory sensors that are applied non-invasively, as shown in this diagram, uh, one over the chest that measures the heart rate, respiratory rate, and depth of breathing, and the one over the finger that measures the pulse oximetry or rather the oxygen content in the blood, whether these could serve to be very good sensitive uh, biomarker in the identification of patients at risk of clinical deterioration. And we hope to um, translate this to COVID-19 patients who suffer from pneumonia. All right, so you want these sensors um, to be deployed in COVID-19 wards, but how far along are we in development? What are the, help us understand, what are some of the pros and cons of using it specifically for COVID-19 though? Well, um, most of the patients uh, with COVID-19 are um, in single isolation rooms. This poses a challenge for close monitoring of these uh, vital parameters. So the uh, cardiorespiratory sensors are already in production. The ones that you see in the diagrams have already been used uh, for patients with bacterial pneumonia as well as chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases. These sensors are then synced with a laptop and transmitted um, seamlessly via uh, Wi-Fi uh, to a central monetary computer where they can see in real time the respiratory rate, the depth of breathing, the heart rate, as well as the pulse oximetry readings. Mm -hmm. This would help uh, to minimize the need for nurses uh, who have to don on uh, pro personal protective gear to go into these rooms every four hours to monitor these vital parameters. Professor, around the world and here in Singapore as well, we've seen people, you know, sort of progress to going into ICU with this COVID-19 disease. Uh, how critical is early identification of clinical deterioration in saving somebody's life? Well, these uh, novel uh, cardiorespiratory sensors have been shown in uh, the study on bacterial uh, pneumonia patients that it could even predict uh, clinical deterioration up to 24 hours ahead of time uh, using uh, this composite score of uh, the heart rate, the respiratory rate, and the depth of breathing, or what we term as breathing variability, together with pulse oximetry. And uh, be and being able to detect uh, clinical deterioration ahead of time or identifying the, the group of patients at risk of clinical deterioration would give us the time window necessary to bring them into the intensive care facility or high dependency unit where they can be monitored more closely, but more importantly for um, beneficial therapeutic uh, interventions to be administered in a timely fashion. And these two measures are critical in uh, saving lives, I believe. Yeah. So you mentioned um, you're trying to develop these predictive models that will use uh, respiratory rate and breathing variability to detect clinical deterioration, as you mentioned earlier. Can you help us understand the significance of these two factors? 
Right. So um, the lungs are responsible for extracting oxygen from the environment and maintaining normal oxygen levels within our body. So when the uh, virus affects the lungs, causing pneumonia, certain areas of the lungs can no longer serve its function of extracting oxygen and maintaining oxygen within our blood. Hence, the first uh, sign would be a drop in oxygen concentration, and this would then trigger us to compensate by breathing more rapidly and breathing deeply. So this increase in respiratory rate and depth of breathing constitute what we term as breathing variability. And this can these changes in breathing variability can be ahead of changes uh, that we can see in heart rate as well as blood pressure response. So it would serve to be a more sensitive biomarker in the detection of clinical deterioration. Well, indeed, a very interesting and a productive project there. Thank you so much, um, Professor, for speaking with us. Associate Professor Li Ping, Senior Consultant at the NUH Division of Respiratory and Critical Care Medicine.